We need to keep in mind that 80% of the media consumed around the world is created in the United States. So we are, to a large extent, responsible for exporting a rather negative view of women around the world. At the dawn of a new millennium, in a world that, as far as we know, is uh, at least half women, the message and the worldview that's being reflected to children is very, very unbalanced. It was really mostly G-rated videos that I watched with my daughter, when she started when she was about two or three. And uh, I immediately noticed that there seemed to be far fewer female characters than male characters in movies that are clearly made for little kids, G-rated movies. Um, and I was surprised, I had no idea, you know, I assumed that things made for kids, you know, would be balanced, I suppose, even though other films in Hollywood are not. Um, so that's, that's kind of how it all started, and now I've taken it much further than I ever thought I would. The labels are definitely limiting, um, and, uh, uh, you know, I think Disney's doing a great job now getting away from the strict idea of a princess and kind of reimagining them. Uh, Maleficent is a total reimagining of the Sleeping Beauty story, and uh, Frozen is not true love's kiss that cures her, it's uh, sisterly love. So uh, um, I think things are changing in that respect. But yeah, any female characters are very narrowly stereotyped a lot of the time, and, and it's very important that we broaden what they can do and what can they, they can be seen doing. In the beginning, I was just, I was very fortunate to be getting jobs, but uh, I selected roles thinking about them as an actor, like is this going to be challenging in some way, interesting in some way. I really didn't want to play just the girlfriend of the person that was having all the adventures. So I was very lucky that I got to play a baseball phenomenon and uh, um, become a sort of road warrior and Thelma Louise and, and play the president. What it, uh, what it told me was how few opportunities we give women to feel inspired by the female characters in a movie. So after that, instead of thinking about, is it interesting for me to play, I would also think about, what are the women in the audience going to think about my character? Our research shows that uh, the ratio of male to female characters has been exactly the same since 1946. So all the times that um, the media wants us to believe that things have improved. Uh, it really hasn't if you look at the numbers. Um, there's, there's been certain movies all along the way where people, people want to say, well, now things are different. Cer certainly now, uh, you know, now that there's been uh, a Sex in the City movie, a huge hit, or Mamma Mia, a giant hit, uh, Bridesmaids, now things will be different. But um, the numbers show that, uh, that things haven't really changed in any significant way in decades. America is not um, doing the best job. We're somewhere in the middle. We're not the worst, but we're actually far from doing the best job. And uh, it's, it, it's very meaningful because we create 80% of the media that's consumed worldwide. So it's, uh, we are largely responsible for exporting a negative image of women. Um, there wasn't any, you know, clear ranking of who's doing it best because there were different measures, but um, uh, South Korea uh, had half of their lead characters female. So that's vastly different from the United States. And China had, uh, China and Brazil and uh, Australia had 40% of the lead characters as female. And, and we're far, far below that. The main purpose we have done all this research for is uh, because we work directly with content creators. Uh, because I'm in the industry, we can go directly to studios and networks and the guilds and producers and share it, the information with them in a, in a collegial sort of um, in-house way. And uh, that was my idea from the beginning was that having direct access to the people making the decisions is is very important rather than trying to get to them by raising up the public by educating the entire public you know if you look at the history of uh, feminism and uh, the first uses of the word um, because there's been different chapters um, that's always been included in the 
counter argument that that this is about hating men, and uh, it's it's just so not true and not a part of it. Um, we're talking about equality uh, for for both genders and you know working uh, in uh, complete harmony together. So it's it's just one of those horrible um, uh, misconceptions that stuck in the public mind somehow, um, which I think contributes to. Um, younger women not wanting to say the word, you know, they'll say they believe in gender equality, but they won't say the word feminist because so much of media has tainted uh, the idea of it.